Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video is going to be a review on La Roche-Posay products and I thought for this review we could kind of switch up the way that we do things. So instead of including products that I maybe didn't like so much, I just wanted to stick to the things that I really love and would highly recommend and also talk about which products I think are going to be better suited for dry skin versus oily skin because I want you guys to be able to figure out which products are going to be best for you. So I thought this would be the best way to do that. So I have cleansers, moisturizers, and sunscreens. In each of those categories, we'll do a little comparison, put the products head to head, talk about ingredients, formulation, I'll show you them applied to my skin so that you can truly get a feel for each product and again, figure out what's going to be best for you. Before we jump into it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Both of those things really help to support me with engagement. So thank you so much for doing that. Also make sure to come hang out with me on Instagram and TikTok. Username is right here. It's the same on both platforms. And I recently launched Lightroom presets for editing Instagram photos. I'm obsessed with them. If you need some new filters in your life, really quick, easy edits, those will be listed in my description box below as well. All right, let's jump into it. All right, category one, let's start off with cleansers. So we have two cleansers here, and I think this is probably the most obvious category as to which one is better for dry skin versus oily skin because it literally says that on the label. But for those of you that have normal skin, combo skin, or maybe you just prefer a certain type of formulation, I thought it would still be helpful to talk through these anyway. Okay, so the two cleansers that we have are their Purifying Foaming Cleanser and Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. Also, before I forget to say this, I'm just going to include asterisks in my description box below for the products that I was gifted in PR and then the products that don't have an asterisk were things that I purchased with my own money. I always really appreciate getting product in PR like that. It just makes it easier for me to upload more content for you guys and to include a lot more products in videos like this when I do reviews. So thank you so much to La Roche-Posay and Skin Store for the PR, but also I did purchase some with my own money too. Okay, so the Purifying Foaming Cleanser says it's for normal to oily skin, that it's safe for sensitive skin and it effectively cleanses and removes excess oil. Versus the Hydrating Gentle Cleanser says it's for normal to dry skin, also safe for sensitive skin and gently cleanses while retaining essential moisture. And these two products actually have several of the same ingredient highlights in common, which I just found interesting since they're for different skin types and they have completely different formulations. But the first ingredient that I wanna make sure that I'm calling out that's actually in all La Roche-Posay products is their prebiotic thermal spring water. So I believe this may be trademarked by them. I'm not entirely certain, but it's essentially water that's been sourced from thermal springs that's supposed to be helpful for sensitive skin because it may decrease inflammation and calm and soothe the skin. So if you have sensitive skin in general or you just have some sort of irritation and redness going on, that could be something that's helpful in calming that down. I always appreciate things like that as someone with sensitive and reactive skin myself, I think it's a nice touch. But other than that, these also have glycerin, ceramide MP, and niacinamide in them. So all ingredients that are going to help to replenish and hydrate the skin. And this hydrating gentle cleanser actually has a couple of extra goodies like vitamin E, that's a skin conditioning antioxidant, and it has panthenol, which is one of my personal favorite ingredients because it's also something that can help to calm and soothe and actually protect the skin to help to restore the skin barrier if you have skin barrier damage. I already had to move because this was getting dangerously close to my face, so just gonna do that proactively. Sorry to disrupt the video back to our scheduled programming. Again, of course, the formulations are completely different between the two. So the Purifying Foaming Cleanser has more of a gel-like consistency that's actually really dense. It lathers really well on the skin and it actually does bubble up a little bit. So unlike other cleansers, not like I'm looking at you, CeraVe, but I kind of am, that claim to be foaming that really are not at all, this one does give you some of that bubbly action. So while bubbles are not indicative of a proper cleanse, I can totally understand that some people just really enjoy that experience when using a cleanser. So if you like that sort of application, then I think you'll really enjoy this. I will say that if I use this too often, like there was a week where I used it every single day, my skin does start to feel a little bit dry which is kind of surprising because I have combo skin that leans oily, so typically I don't ever have that issue with cleansers, and it's not like there's anything in this that's supposed to be drying. It has gentle cleansing agents, nothing like that, but something about this formulation does just make my skin feel a little bit tight. I do start to notice a little bit of flakiness around my mouth and nose if I use it too frequently. So if you're incredibly oily, you may not have that problem at all, or you could just use this less frequently, kind of switch back and forth between other cleansers if you wanted to try this. 
just my own personal experience. The Hydrating Gentle Cleanser, on the other hand, has more of that true milky, creamy consistency, but it's actually so nice and lightweight, even though it is creamy. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin, it's not greasy, and I actually do prefer this, both from a formulation perspective and how it treats my skin. My skin feels so nice and soft and replenished after I use it. I never have that issue in feeling dehydrated with continued use. It's such a nice formulation. So even though my skin leans oily, I definitely personally prefer this one, but I think both are great options. So this one's more obvious, but oily skin, the purifying foaming cleanser is going to be for you. Dry skin, the hydrating gentle cleanser is going to be for you, but I think this is a perfect example of where just because something says that it's for dry skin doesn't mean that you can't use it if that's not your skin type. Okay, now let's move on to moisturizers. I actually have four different moisturizers here, so let's quickly read through what each of these are. So I have, oh, I don't know how to say this. They're Tolerain, Tolerain, Ultra Soothing Repair Moisturizer. I have their Cicaplast Balm B5 Soothing Repairing Balm. I have their Lipicare, <laughs> Lipicar, Balm AP. What are these words? Intense Repair Moisturizing Cream and their Tolerain Double Repair Face Moisturizer. Let's start off with this little teeny guy right here. So again, it's called their Tolerain Ultra Soothing Repair Moisturizer. A few ingredient highlights here, including glycerin, squalane, and shea butter, which are really nice moisturizing and conditioning ingredients, and a peptide that's actually going to help to replenish and calm the skin. And I think this is a really good example of a product where you can't judge a book by its cover or judge a product based off its ingredients label because squalane and shea butter are really rich moisturizing ingredients. And when you see those higher up on a label, sometimes that translates into a thicker, creamier, richer formulation. But that is not the formulation of this product whatsoever. It is incredibly lightweight and definitely the lightest weight out of all four of these options right here. I personally love this. I really love a lightweight moisturizer like this for the daytime. And even though it is very lightweight, it still is something that feels really, really nice and moisturizing and hydrating on the skin. So I get all day hydration with this. I don't feel dehydrated at all when I wear it, but if you had dry skin, this would definitely not be enough for you. So this is going to be perfect for those of you that have oily or combo leaning oily skin. Next is their double repair face moisturizer. So this has glycerin, niacinamide, and ceramide NP. So again, some nice hydrating, calming, and replenishing ingredients. It does have one ingredient, seventh on the label, that can be comedogenic in higher concentrations. It's called Miristol Miristate. You guys know I always just like to reiterate this. One ingredient on a label that's comedogenic is not going to be a deal breaker for most people, especially when it's seventh on the label. If it's not within that top one to five or even top one to three, hopefully that won't be a problem for you, but I just like to always bring that up in case any of you guys are really acne prone or if you're using this product and wondering why you may be breaking out, that could be why. But nothing else on the label should be pore clogging and that just reminded me, did I not say that all of these products are fragrance and essential oil free? Because if I didn't, they are. This one definitely has a creamier formulation than the Ultra Soothing Repair Moisturizer, but it's still something that I would consider to be relatively lightweight versus other moisturizing creams that I've tried. So when it comes to moisturizers, I feel like we have gels, lotions, creams, and then butters or pastier formulations. And this one I would say is more of a lotion, kind of in there. So medium as far as the thickness or consistency goes, and this one feels really great as well. If you have normal skin or combo skin that leans a little bit dry or you have dehydrated skin, this is going to be such a nice moisturizer for you. Next, we have their Lipicar Balm, and this one says it's an intense repair moisturizing cream that it's lipid replenishing, gives you up to 48 hours of hydration, and is clinically shown to reduce dry, rough skin. This also has glycerin and niacinamide, it has shea butter as well, and it has a sugar molecule which will help to hydrate the skin called Manos. Nothing in this that should be comedogenic, which is great, and this is something that is definitely the thickest so far out of all of these. More of that true moisturizing cream, but still isn't something that I feel is too heavy to wear throughout the day. I've worn this underneath makeup and I still think that it works. It's just something that you're going to have to let absorb for a little bit longer than maybe something like those first two moisturizers because it is just a little thicker. So I actually really like this one surprisingly. It's not something that I would wear every day. It's more of a nighttime moisturizer for me, but if you had dry skin, again dehydration, any sort of flakiness going on, I think you would love this. 
And I think it works again for both the morning and night, but maybe if you're someone that leans a little bit less dry, you would just prefer this as a nighttime moisturizer, but I do think that it's really, really nice. I had a lot of flakiness around my face going on and I used this and I feel like it helped a ton to just relieve the flakes and a little bit of that itch that I was experiencing. And last we have their Cicaplast Balm B5 Soothing Repairing Balm. I've definitely talked about this a couple times on my channel already, so I have a video comparing this to the CeraVe Healing Ointment. I'll list that below. I've included this in a favorites video for sure because I think it's really a great product. So this is something that is the most unique as far as the formulation goes. This has more of that kind of pastier feel to it at first. We'll get there, we'll get there. And when we're thinking about soothing the skin and repairing a damaged skin barrier, this is definitely the most impressive for the ingredients. So it does also have glycerin and shea butter, but aside from that, it has panthenol, zinc gluconate, copper gluconate, and matacasocide. And all of those ingredients are really going to help to calm the skin, soothe the skin, decrease redness, potentially decrease inflammation, and just really help with irritation. And like I was saying, the formulation of this is definitely the pastiest compared to the other moisturizers, but something about it is still lightweight, if that makes any sense. I was really thrown off the first time that I used this. I said this in a previous video, but because it was so pasty at first, I was like, okay, this is going to be heavy on my skin, but it actually wasn't, and it fully absorbed right away, so I had a patch of really flaky, dehydrated skin that I put it on, and I was like, dang, this probably isn't going to help, but it really, really did. So even though it's pastier than this, this does feel thicker and heavier once it's absorbed into the skin. So I don't know, something that's really interesting, I do still think that this is going to be best suited for those of you that have dry to extra dry skin, or for those of you that have patches of skin like me that are flaky and dehydrated that really need to be replenished and restored. So this has been so, so helpful for me. Just throughout the past year, I've had a journey with my skin and face masks, these ones that we wear for COVID. I don't think I can say that on YouTube, I don't know, but, those have caused so much irritation for me and for months I just had really flaky skin that would not go away until I started using this product and also the CeraVe healing ointment. So again, if you wanna see those products compared, I will list that video below, but I think that this is so amazing. I would highly recommend it. And finally, for the last category, we have three different sunscreens. So I have their Anthelios AOX Daily Antioxidant Serum Sunscreen. I have their Anthelios Light Fluid Ultralight Sunscreen and their Anthelios 60 Melt-In Sunscreen Milk. Okay, let's start off with the Anthelios Light Fluid Sunscreen. So this says it's ultra light on the label, that it's broad spectrum SPF 60, it's for the face, tested on sensitive skin, fragrance free. Active ingredients in this are avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. So this is a chemical sunscreen, which is actually the case with all of these sunscreens. No mineral filters like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. That can be a deal breaker for some because those ingredients can be a little bit more irritating than mineral filters. For me personally, these don't irritate my skin and I really, really enjoy all of them, but of course, that does not mean that that will be the case for you, so the only way to know that would be to test out. As far as ingredient highlights, there's really nothing for me to call out with this product. I will say that the third ingredient is denatured alcohol, and that is a solvent that does really get a bad rap. It can absolutely be drying in higher concentrations, so if you have dry skin or skin that's easily irritated by drying ingredients, this will probably be one to skip, but it also doesn't have a formulation that is well suited for dry skin anyway, so I personally don't have issue with it. Just wanted to call that out in case you do have skin that leans a little bit dry, but I have other options for you. So the star of this product, while it doesn't have ingredients that really stand out to me, it has an amazing formulation that definitely stands out to me. So it's very, very lightweight, very liquidy, and it absolutely reminds me of an Asian sunscreen. So Asian sunscreens, because they have superior sunscreen filters, absolutely, stop saying absolutely, really, get it together really have nicer, more cosmetically elegant formulations. They don't leave a white cast, they're not greasy, they feel so lightweight. This is very reminiscent of that for me personally. I think it's so nice. So if you have really oily skin and you've been trying to find a sunscreen that doesn't look greasy or shiny on the skin, you have to try this one out. I feel like you will be obsessed with it. It absorbs so well, absolutely zero shiny finish. And even though it's really lightweight and not greasy, it also doesn't mattify the skin. I actually don't like sunscreens that make my skin look really flat. I don't know, that's just me personally. 
doesn't do that it just makes my skin look like itself and I really enjoy it so oily to very oily skin this is the one for you next is the anthelios aox sunscreen so this is called their daily antioxidant serum with sunscreen it's a broad spectrum spf 50 also has avobenzone homosalate octisalate and octocrylene plus oxybenzone for the chemical filters ingredient highlights here include vitamin e and vitamin c so those are the antioxidants that they're calling out the form of vitamin c is ascorboglucoside that can be formulated in products with higher pH levels than something like ascorbic acid, which has to be in a lower pH. I still would not personally rely on this for your soul antioxidant support, but they do have those ingredients added, plus a couple calming and soothing ingredients like skullcap root and candle tea leaf. This does have vitamin E and vitamin C in it, and the form of vitamin C is ascorboglucoside, so while that can be formulated in products with higher pH levels than something like ascorbic acid and still allow you to see benefit, I still would not necessarily rely on this alone for antioxidant support. I wouldn't get sucked into that marketing, but it does have a couple of those ingredients added to help to condition the skin at the very least, plus skullcap root and candle tree leaf to help to calm and soothe the skin. The other thing that I don't love about this messaging or labeling here is the fact that they call it a serum with sunscreen. While they're not saying to apply it before moisturizer, some people may get tripped up by that. So just make sure that you're not getting kind of confused about the application process. No matter what formulation a sunscreen is in, whether it's like a serum or like a creamy moisturizer, it needs to be applied last after moisturizer. So sunscreen is always the last step in your skincare routine in the morning, not before moisturizer like a true serum would be. But aside from that, I love, love the formulation of this. It's amazing. It's also something that's very, very lightweight, but not as lightweight and traceless as this. It does feel a little bit more hydrating, and I personally, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm obsessed with this product. Gives the skin a really nice, beautiful glow, but also is not something that looks greasy whatsoever. So this, I would say, really would work with all skin types. If you're extra dry and you prefer something thicker, then the last option will be for you. But other than that, I feel like you can't go wrong with this. And if you were drier, you could just layer a thicker moisturizing cream underneath this and then apply this on top of that. Oh, and I think you would love it. And last, we have their Anthelio 60 Melt-In Sunscreen Milk. So broad spectrum SPF 60, active ingredients are avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. And this one actually has several of the same ingredient highlights as this one. It just doesn't have vitamin C. So really nothing else to call out here. And this formulation is the thickest out of all of these, but is still something that I really gravitate towards. I really, really enjoy this formulation. It's creamy, but it's lightweight still in my personal opinion. And I think the other reason why I love this so much is because it has that moisturizing, silky, softening feel on the skin, but it's not greasy whatsoever like a lot of other sunscreens that do initially have that formulation. So no greasy feel, no greasy look. It's definitely something that compared to these other sunscreens looks the dewiest on the skin, but I think it makes the skin look really nice and healthy. So I think that this is going to be the best for those of you that have normal to dry skin, but again, I lean oily and I've worn this so many times and really, really like it. And last bonus of this one is actually that it's water resistant for 80 minutes. So if you're gonna be running outside, sweating outside, anything like that, then this could be a really great option for you. Okay, we are going to wrap up, but I have to give a really quick shout out to this right here. So this is completely unnecessary and I just was curious to try it because I've been on the lookout for makeup setting sprays that don't have fragrance added to them. So this is their thermal spring water spray. It literally just, uh oh, did that land on the lens? <laughs> it's just a really, really nice fine mist. It feels so nice on the skin and how I've actually been loving applying this is before makeup if I have a little bit of irritation going on. So if I'm noticing some redness, if I have a little bit of stinging, I will just spray this all over my face and it really helps to calm my skin down. I absolutely love it for that. The other way that you can use this is underneath your face mask actually, because that's going to help to keep the skin hydrated, especially with moisturizer on top and help to calm and soothe the skin if your mask is causing a little bit of irritation. So I would definitely recommend this for that purpose 
or if you wanted a nice hydrating setting spray after makeup to bring the skin to life a little bit, this would work really well for that too. So had to include that, not, you know, in any of these other categories, but I really love that product. Now we can officially wrap up this video. Those are all the products that I wanted to talk through and my thoughts on which ones are best for dry skin versus oily skin. So I really hope that this helped you guys out and would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Have you tried any of these products? What skin type do you have? Do you think that they work best for your skin type? Are you going to try something else after watching this video? If so, all the products that I talked about will be listed in my description box below in order of mention. Keep it nice and organized for you guys. And as always, if there's anything else you would like to see from me next, leave that request in the comments as well. All right, you guys know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and send my channel to a friend. Again, all of those things really help to support me, so thank you so much for doing that. My next video will be up in a few days, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.